you guys oh my god <laughs> welcome back to my channel this has been a whirlwind okay so a few days ago i posted my a favorites video and in the beginning i talked about how much i'm in love with renee rollo products who's um, a celebrity esthetician and how her products changed my life okay now there's like sun in my eyes so i upload it and then a little while later i'm on instagram and Renee Rouleau follows me. And I'm like, huh. And then I have a DM. And I'm like, huh. And it's from her. And she's like, thank you so much for the shout out. I'm so glad you like our products, et cetera, et cetera. And then she says, I'm gonna be in LA this weekend. Do you want a facial? Now, let me remind you, she does not give facials to the public. Like, you can't just like book a facial with her. So this is like not a thing that I ever thought I would get in my life. So Renee Rouleau, celebrity esthetician, does like facials for Demi Lovato. Ask little old me if I want to go to her hotel room today and get a facial from her. I literally have a box of trash in my car. <laughs> I asked her if it was okay if I would film some of it, so because I thought I'm getting a facial from a pro, and even though you can't get facials from her, and this will be like the only time I ever get her to touch my face, I'm gonna be asking her a lot of questions and kind of picking her brain about skincare. I also thought it would just be interesting for you guys to like see the process of her facial and just kind of get some like skincare tips. So I have to go and um, get a facial by Renee Rollo. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm here with the legendary Renee Rollo. Hello! And she has me in this fancy getup, and she's about to give me the best facial I've ever had in my life. And she's gonna be sharing um, just some like tips and tricks, some skincare tips that you can benefit from at home. Um, we're also gonna talk about some of her products that I love and I'm obsessed with. Is there anything on your skin right now? Sunscreen? Sunscreen, moisturizer. Okay. Your vitamin C. Okay. So when I look at your skin today, Joanna, is this a normal Joanna skin day? Is there anything out of the ordinary going on? There's a couple like clogged pores. So that's a little bit out of the ordinary. Normally my skin's pretty clear. Okay. But with blackheads and congestion. And do you do you know why you get clogged pores? Do you think that you're using something that's like a little too rich or I have no idea. I've literally had them since like my brothers both had in intense acne I always looked out but I always had blackheads mm -hmm. and clogged pores and for the life of me could never get rid of them mm -hmm. and then as I've gotten older and moved um, to the West Coast I'm from the East Coast originally I uh, started experiencing the dehydration whereas I was normally pretty oily. oily sure so I find that like while trying to combat the dehydration it exacerbates the clogged pores right and what's on your like when I touched your skin you know today you said you had sunscreen and moisturizer mm -hmm. like what what kind is that who makes up so I use your vitamin during the day I use your um, well I always do the elderberry toner, toner. I feel mm -hmm. like that's made such a difference in my the hydration levels great um, and then I use your vitamin C serum okay and then embryo lease is the moisturizer I use all the time okay i've used it for years and that could be contributing to my blackheads mm -hmm. but it's like i've struggled so much with moisturizer it's the only moisturizer that doesn't break me out mm -hmm. so it could be clogging pores but it's not breaking me out right. actively mm -hmm. and that's a moisturizer not a sunscreen right it's a moisturizer yeah the and then you put sunscreen on top yes the is sunscreen. it a physical one like yes. a mineral because when i felt your skin like I felt the heaviness on your skin. Really? Yeah, like it, it's like I felt like a residue on there. And so, so this is how you want, I want you to think about it. Okay. So during the day, the, ma the main thing that we want to focus on with skin is all about defense, meaning the sun is coming at you, UV light is coming at you, increased free radical activity, and it's all about like, you know, trying to defend the skin from the environment. So the most two most important uh, types of ingredients are sunscreen and 
antioxidants, right? Uh -huh. So you have a vitamin C serum and then sunscreen. What concerns me or what I'm wondering is first of all, when you put sunscreen on, when you, so you have the vitamin C serum on, so mm -hmm. that kind of coats the skin cells a little bit. Then you put on a regular moisturizer, so now that's coating the skin cells. Mm -hmm. And then you're using a sunscreen, which might have a hard time really protecting and coating the cells because you've already kind of like, everything is already kind of uh, absorbed into the skin, does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, if it's a mineral sunscreen, that should go on last and that does kind of more stay on top. But if okay. it has a any chemical type ingredients in it, um, like ox, oc, octanoxate or something, it's I'm worried that it's not coating and protecting your cells as much. And, but then, so that's number one. Okay. So I'm, I'm wondering if you're not getting the full sun protection that you should be because you're slipping a moisturizer on underneath that might be kind of preventing it. Oh. Um, but, but then secondly, I'm wondering if even though you're not getting breakouts from the combination that you've been doing, but just the fact that it feels heavy on the skin to me, one it makes me wonder if it's contributing. If it's just if it's too heavy for you, Got right? It. That could be how. So are you some not effect. supposed to feel skincare on your skin? That's a great question. Because um, I always it, thought like if it, I right it, like I like that feeling, but right. I'm like you're saying this, and I'm like, oh, is that bad? Right. So so your skin is like a sponge. Mm -hmm. It takes in what it needs, and the rest sits on top. Right. Got it. So when you think of a sponge, you you know a dry sponge, you water it, it puffs up, absorbs, and mm -hmm. then everything flows over. Okay. So your skin cells are kind of the same way. The time when kind of still feeling a residue is helpful is if you're in a really cold climate, mm -hmm. because whatever's left on top it's almost protecting. acts like a little bodyguard to okay. prevent moisture evaporation, because moisturizer do evaporate. Like like if you put a moisturizer on in the morning, by the end of the day, you can feel tight because it, right. it's kind of lost its, it, you know, like it loses it throughout the day. So for dry skin people in dry skin climates, it's okay for them to kind of have a little bit of a residue. But for someone like you, that's prone to some, clog, you know, clogged pores. I mean, we can never, you know, everybody has blackheads and there's no perfect cure for that. And that's, I have blackheads, like that's kind of a fact of life yeah. but but bumps you know little clog bumps mm -hmm. those are usually from something being Got it. too occlusive and blocking to the pores okay so I'm just so what I would like to see you do is use a vitamin C serum because we want that um, but that's so lightweight that that's not gonna really like um, coat everything mm -hmm. um, or be too much um, but then I'd like to see you have your moisturizer with the sunscreen built into it. Got it. Right? So like, so because a moisturizer with a sunscreen, it's FDA approved to, you know, block UV rays and you know that you're getting kind of what it needs to do. And like I said, putting a layer of a cream under there may prevent, you know, you getting true sun, sun protection. Okay. In my line, I have, uh, it's called Weightless Protection SPF 30. It's great for people who are prone to clog pores, mm -hmm. but it uses both chemical, chemical and physical. Okay. So what I like about it is I feel like with sunscreen, um, you know, everyone's skin is kind of different and can tolerate different things, but, but I like chemical because I know it's getting inside and then the physical is helping more like protection from the outside. So right. I kind of like a, kind of a sandwich like approach a, like right. that, like okay. inside out. So that's how I like to wear sunscreen. Sometimes if I'm going to really be out outdoors, then I'll put a physical sunscreen on top just to give like even more protection. Okay. But for every day, I think my weightless protection SPF 30 would be really helpful for you. Okay. Um, because it dries to a matte finish, it doesn't pill under makeup, and uh, and I like you're not gonna feel it. But here's let me uh, also talk a little bit about makeup, and also to yeah. your to your viewers about makeup. My job as an esthetician is all about like everyone comes to me and they go, I have acne. Um, I don't want to have to wear makeup. I feel like I'm hiding my skin. Mm -hmm. I want to not have to be chained to makeup, right? Right. So people, so in theory, my job is to get people to never have to wear makeup again because their skin is so flawless underneath that they don't even have to wear makeup. However, I actually don't agree with that philosophy. I think everyone should have, should wear makeup. And the reason why is um, as long as it's not pore clogging and some makeup can be, I actually have a great blog post on my blog where I did a foundation test. Did you see that where I, um, I did, uh, you'll have to link it. No, yeah, it's I'll link it. But basically I did the oil migration test where I took a piece of paper mm -hmm. and you put a dollop of different foundations oh. and you let it sit for 24 hours and then you flip over the back and you can see where the oil 
oil migrated out. So there were there were um, foundations that I tested that basically like were supposed to be for like acne prone skin, and they but had totally... major oil coming out oh of it. Gosh. So anyway, you'll have to link to that blog post because it's super cool. But the point is, is as long as you have the right foundation that won't clog your pores, foundation all foundations even even if it doesn't say it has spf in it they all have um, like titanium dioxide in it, mm -hmm. which is a natural sunscreen. So I like to think of, of makeup as an extra layer of protection. Like it's it's protecting your skin, giving you a block from the sun. And also people oftentimes use sunscreen very sparingly. So they may mm -hmm. not even be getting like true, you know, if it says SPF 45, if you're only using a tiny bit, you might only be getting an SPF of five, right. right? And so I like makeup, even if it's not foundation, it could be a mineral powder, just those another, have sunscreen, but just another layer, layer. of protection. So makeup Makeup is your friend. I gotta but, wear but, more of it. <laughs> yeah, like I, and especially people with melasma, hyperpigmentation, mm -hmm. discoloration, I feel like, you know, they have to be really careful about UV rays. Yes. And it's just a, again, it's an insurance policy to feel like you're really protecting your skin from the sun. Because, and the reality is, you know, throughout the day, you know, you have oil being produced from the skin and that breaks sun protection down. And so when you can dust on a little powder or something, you know, even a, a couple times a day, you know, they have mineral sunscreen powders, but like I said, you can just use a regular one. Um, it's just kind of ensuring that your sunscreen's lasting. My best advice is to really make like, really give your sunscreen and your sun protection thought. Got it. Because I never because knew that any about... anti-aging product you're using isn't going to work if you're, you know, you're getting DNA damage from the sun or UV light. Ooh. So, so first what we did on your pretty skin is, um, and I'm kind of getting to know your skin a little bit right now, mm -hmm. but, um, so I'll be putting you into a skin type when we're done, but I mean, you have beautiful skin, Joanna. And, okay. um, uh, but we're doing some good exfoliation. I did a enzyme peel to loosen and dissolve and digest surface dead cells. And it smelled so good. Yes. Um, and now um, after those cells have been dissolved, we're doing something called bioabrasion, which is the next generation of microdermabrasion. Oh, this is yes. a, an exfoliating foam that um, wets and softens the skin cells. And this has a diamond head tip and it's kind of sucking the skin into the tip and it's kind of scraping off and lifting off discoloration and exfoliating in a, in a different kind of way than the enzyme peel did. When it comes to exfoliation, there's two types. There's kind of physical and chemical. So chemical is where you're lowering the pH of the skin mm -hmm. and actually dissolving the dead cells chemically. And then, um, physical is where you're actually lifting off um, the dead cells. And so a lot of times I have a great blog post about facial scrubs because like they kind of seem old school, right? Mm -hmm. People are way more into like using a liquid acid toner and you know, acids and things. Right. But, but there's like, like, there's a lot of like rumors going around that it's like, it scratches your right, skin. Right, it scratches. And, and is that wrong? Well, if they, if they don't, if they have sharp edges so Got it. yes they can that's why you always want a facial scrub that has perfectly round beads but no doubt lifting off physically going in and lifting off dead cells is crucial to making the skin feel soft and lifting off discoloration I'll tell you a, a quick story just to kind of hit home that point my late husband he had a brown spot on his cheek and i was always like dabbing on skin bleaches like anytime he's like on the couch watching netflix like i'm just like oh here honey and like it was mm -hmm. kind of my job to kind of take care of his skin i was using Triluma, which is a prescription skin bleach. Mm -hmm. um, I was using uh, my uh, Pro Results Power Serum, which was one of my acid serums. I would use Triple Berry Smoothing Peel on it. And so I was getting the, the bleaching agent, I was getting the acids, and it would definitely lighten up. But you know when, what was the biggest game changer? is every time he shaved. So shaving is a form of exfoliation. Oh, right. So, you know, he didn't shave every day, maybe like twice a week, but when he would shave, you know, he'd go over his face and I'd always say, go a little extra, you know, on that brown mm -hmm. spot. I would kid you not, after shaving, it's 30% lighter. Wow. So basically the acids were really dissolving. The skin bleach was really trying to suppress the melanin, but once he took the blade and actually lifted it off, that's when it really made the difference. Now. 
I think it was a combination of all three. If right. I hadn't been doing the other two things, the blade wouldn't have worked as well. So I share that example just to let people know like how that much physical exfoliating. That it's still important. So don't okay. think that like so facial scrubs like are bad. It's more like finding a combination. Yeah, and, and finding the right kind of scrub. Like again, mm -hmm. that has round beads. We have one in my line called Mint Buffing Beads and I'm working on a new one right now. And, and the truth of the matter is nothing will make you feel softer than after you use a nice scrub. Mm -hmm. Like it just like, it makes the skin feel baby soft and that's when you know it really worked. Wow, I love this. This feels really cool. It feels like a little like a little cat leech at your face. Oh one. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard all sorts of different yeah, things. Yeah, it's like a little suction, but it feels good. Yeah, it's um, old microdermabrasion would use crystals and they were just really messy and they were really harsh and this mm -hmm. is like really gentle, but you'll definitely notice your skin's gonna feel very soft and smooth. I'm turning 30 this year. Uh -huh. And so I'm like starting to notice first signs of aging and wanting to prevent that as best as I can. Right. And um, so I'm like looking into like microneedling and like PRP facials and lasers. And I'm like, it's so overwhelming sometimes for someone who right. didn't study it. And, and I'm like, what, what am I supposed to get? Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, the reality is, I think that people are jump-starting things a little too early. Okay. So like, so your skin has a metabolism and with age, it slows down and that's when the skin kind of goes in slow motion. The problem with people doing too, ma too many, quote unquote, anti-aging treatments too early is that you know, anti-aging treatments are designed to stimulate the metabolism of the cells, but those cells are already very active already. And so like it could result in potential breakout and potential mm. like, um, um, you know, potential sensitivity or irritation or things when like your skin doesn't need that boost, right? You kind of need that boost when everything is slowing down. Got it. And so when you're young, everything is still really active. So particularly like, with people with acne, like it's all about trying to calm the skin, not trying to stimulate and poke needles in the faces because the it. skin is already like, you know, acne is a sign of inflammation and the skin is already kind of inflamed and you know, it's more about putting the fire out. I feel like that's something as a consumer that we hear all the time that like, you should start young because the, the younger you start, the, the better everything will work. But you're kind of saying that like, no, it's about like working with what your problem is in the moment. Right, what does my skin need right now? But the starting young is making sure you get your sunscreen right. application down right and really focusing on that. Uh, this is ultrasound and it helps send sound waves down through the skin to carry the ingredients deeper within the skin. Um, so yeah, uh, retinol would be good for you to start and then eventually working into a prescription retinoid uh, if you felt like you needed it. I mean, okay. if you start young enough, sometimes you never have to go to a prescription mm. and, and you know, you've got really nice skin, so you may not have to do that. It's more for people who have like acne indents in the skin, got scarring, it. like really large pores, a lot of texture issues that they need something a little more heavy duty. Got it. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, the thing with a retino with retinol or a prescription retinoid is that it's not something you want to just use when you remember like, oh yeah, I have this in my cabinet and I forgot mm -hmm. to use it. Let me throw this on tonight. Like you want that slow drip to your skin all the time and it's sending a signal to your skin to boost collagen and help retexture the skin and keep it looking young. But you want to, you know, you want to get it on your skin at least like four nights a week. Okay. But I wouldn't do it seven nights a week because right. that's you, too much. You, well, yeah, like you need an exfoliating acid that would be really helpful, and um, you know, there's other things that you want to alternate. Yeah, so it's kind of like I always think about it like, you know, with a home care routine, it's kind of like working out. Like you don't want to just go for a run every day, right? You mm -hmm. want to go for a run, and one day you stretch, and one day you do Pilates, one day you do kickbox. Like it's good right. to kind of have hit different muscles. Yeah, and... you know, have a variety of things. So. That's where serums, like night serums, between a retinol and exfoliating acid and uh, more like a peptide firming or hydrating hyaluronic acid serum, those are kind of the things that you want to so rotate. Okay. I want to stay here forever. We're frosting a cake. <gasps> oh my gosh. This is like... I've been obsessed with these photos of like you putting these masks <laughs> on people. So this is a seaweed mask. It uh, creates an occlusive seal over the skin. So everything 
that I put onto the skin underneath. It has no place else to go but into the skin. And, um, it, but yeah, it lowers the temperature of the skin. It's really calming, really hydrating. And then when it dries, it will just peel right off. It reminds me of when you go to the dentist and get a mold. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I've heard that before. Really? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so then we're going to put you into the skin type. So I, as an esthetician with 30 years experience, I learned long ago when I first became an esthetician that, you know, in school or even, you know, skincare lines, brands, they teach you like, oh, what's your skin type? Dry, normal, oily. And it's like, I started working with clients and it was like, ooh, wait a minute. I have clients that are dry, normal, and oily, or, mm. you know, and have rosacea, and have brown spots, and have sensitivity. What skin type is that? And so I determined there are nine types of skin, and I created a skincare line that caters to the nine skin types. So when people go to ReneeRillo.com, as you know, they can take the quiz, and um, then they get a curated routine exclusively for their skin type. And as yeah. you know, with the skin types, they're very specific. Yes, and, and that's what was so life-changing for me because I'm like, I don't fall into right, the, typical. The, the normal or the oily acne prone. Like I'm like, right. I'm kind of across the board a right. little bit. And that's why I feel like your products have been so helpful for me because I'm like, it's more nuanced than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think like in, in one perfect example is people who have like acne, maybe adult acne, but they're also concerned about aging. And it's like, what's that skin type? You know, brands are like, sorry, we're either going to treat your skin like a 16 year old and dry you out <laughs> for your acne, mm -hmm. or you want anti-aging, it's going to be heavy and greasy and, you know, and, and then subsequently pore clogging, right? right. It's like, so I know it's people like, in their fifties who still struggle with that. Right. Yeah. And so, and that's the problem. It's like, well, what if you're both? And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, Renee Rillo skincare has skin types that cater to both. Almost matches my hair color. <gasps> Your hair is amazing. Pink. I trust everything that you say. Hair. When I saw your 30 years apart photo, Oh my gosh, right? And so she's referring to on Instagram. <laughs> I'm gonna put it right here. Yes, on my own personal Instagram page, I had a picture of me doing a facial and then I retook the same photo, recreated it next to it. I was showing it to my boyfriend and we were like, she looks 30 years younger. <laughs> like I'm like so confused. I'm like, I'm so excited for this facial. I trust anything you say. Oh my gosh. I'm like, whatever you can do to make me look, I guess if I was 30 years younger, I'd look like a newborn baby, but no. <laughs> I would love that. You would be negative one. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, you know, people ask me, I have a great blog post because I turned 50 this past August and I have a great that blog post of like what my secrets or whatever you want to call it. But I think, um, you know, I've just always been good about sunscreen. I've just, I, and I, I go in the sun. It's not that I like hibernate. Like I have a very active lifestyle. I ride motorcycles. I love to run outdoors. Like I'm not hibernating, but I've just always been very meticulous about protecting my skin from the sun. And that has really been at the cornerstone of my routine for my, you know, for ever since I became an esthetician. Granted, when I became an esthetician, we didn't really know about, um, sunscreen and anti-aging back then so I probably didn't start really being paying attention to uh, sunscreen until I was probably like 28 or something oh but, thank god um, thank god uh, for yes. me <laughs> it's like you're peeling so off the layer of my skin we're about to take it off and I'm gonna look negative one negative one right here with Joanna oh my god that is wild oh, my skin feels so supple and like cool yes. So we just did a little mini oh, facial was, today. Ah, yeah, and like, actually you can feel, it like it's best to feel the bottom. <gasps> See how gooey and oh my God. like it's, you know, that's all like where the serums yeah. and creams and everything were. So that's what was like yes, locking into my locking skin. Locking into the skin, yeah. So we just did a little mini facial on Joanna because I have a client coming in shortly, but I wanted to give her a little Renee Rouleau skin love. And then we're going to be talking about her skin type and making sure she has the perfect routine once she walks out of this hotel room. I can't wait to age backwards like Renee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're gonna give me my skin type and tell me what yes. I should be using. Yes, so um, as I said, there were nine different skin types mm -hmm. and um, 
So at the end of the facial, um, I got to know your skin a little bit and I'm putting you in the skin type two. Okay. Um, we have, you've had the virtual consultation with Melina, mm -hmm. um, one of our in-house estheticians. So anybody watching this, um, we offer a free virtual consultation that's uh, free with a hundred dollar purchase of products and you can actually get advice from an esthetician. Um, that we re recently redid the skin care quiz, the skin tech quiz, and so you should be able to take that and kind of get your answers, but sometimes people want like a little more expert advice, so just know that that service is available. Mm -hmm. um, but Joanne, I'm putting you in skin type two, oily combination, occasional breakouts, anti-aging. And the symptoms are enlarged pores and produces oil, mostly in T-zone. Skin feels tight, irritated, or sensitive when harsh products are used. Needs hydration without heavy oils or poor quality ingredients. May get occasional mild breakouts and cysts, weekly or monthly. Post blemish red dark scars that linger. Wants to keep skin healthy and smooth and concerned about aging. So mainly um, the routine consists of, you know, when people like talk about like, what should my skincare routine be? I always think that morning and night, it should be four steps. Cleanser, toner, alcohol-free toner. Um, leave the toner damp. When you leave the toner damp and you put on your serum, it acts as a carrier. So the ingredients from the serum can penetrate deeper into the skin, okay. but also it gives your skin a, a drink of moisture. So when you right. mention you feel like your skin's more hydrated because you're using a toner, it is. Yeah, so your it's skin. never letting your skin fully dry out exactly. after you wash exactly. it. Okay. And your skin cells are like fish. They need water to live, so it's mm -hmm. a great way to deliver water to the skin. And in the case of the elderberry soothing toner, it has antioxidants in it, mm -hmm. so that's additional benefit. And then, so cleanse tone, leave the, the toner damp, a serum, and moisturizer. So that's that's what you want to do morning and night. Cleanse, tone, serum, moisturizer. The difference is, is that in the morning, you're using vitamin C serum, you're using sunscreen as your moisturizer. Or at night, um, you're using more like reparative type serums. There's three different, depending on your skin type, there's two or three different serums, and you kind of rotate them different nights as I mentioned with the analogy about exercise mm -hmm. and then you're using a night moisturizer that doesn't have sunscreen. Um, I wanted to call out um, this is the weightless protection SPF 30. We right that's what you put on about that today mm -hmm. um, but that's great but um, this is the whole I mean I know you're seeing it backwards but this is the whole Rene Rouleau line. Oh wow okay. Um, I also have it over here as well and we have 50 products in the line and so um, because it spans not even skin types. Okay. So as I was talking to Joanna, somebody from the hotel um, knocked at my door and this is from, if you guys haven't listened to the Los Angeles podcast yet, it's a great podcast all about beauty with two beauty editors. And she just sent me this. I haven't opened the card yet, but I can see this. This is oh what my you, god! This is what you give an esthetician. Good to know. Look at oh, that. it's cookie. Oh my gosh! How cute! Those is are that? so cute. Thank you, Sarah and Kirby from Los Angeles. Oh my god! I'm gonna have to check out their podcast. I've never listened to it before. Yeah, it's uh, fairly new, but it's amazing. So yeah, so this is the whole line, and we'll um, make sure that your routine is on par with what your skin needs. And for all your viewers, you, you can, if you want free advice, go to my blog, blog.renewrelo.com or just go to renewrelo.com and click on I'll link everything in the description for you. Yeah, I've had a blog for 10 years and it's all no nonsense, practical tips. And uh, if you want to be a smarter skincare consumer, it's definitely the place to be. Sign up for our emails and, uh, and reach out to customer care if you need any help. But we are here to help you and uh, get you the greatest skin of your lifetime that you deserve so thank you so much Renee of course it was so great to meet you you too okay I am back from my facial with Renee Rouleau wow okay so I am literally conning my way into the A-list world stealing all of their tricks and I'm taking you guys with me being a youtuber is just so crazy like what a turn of events they say you should never meet your heroes right but Renee was the kindest, most down-to-earth person ever. So thank you, Renee, you're a dream. I still don't know how you look as old as you do. I think you're an alien, but I'm not gonna argue. I'm just gonna do everything you told me to. Um, so she was so nice and she sent me home. Sorry, the sun is coming in hot, but she sent me home with so much skincare for me to use and I'm so excited. My skin, I mean, her skincare has literally changed my life. It was definitely in 2019. 
um, you know, she was popping up on a lot of different like beauty blogs and things that I was watching. So I ended up doing a skincare consultation that she mentioned earlier. And the product that the esthetician Paulina recommended to me were so life changing. Like you guys know if you've been watching me for a while that like I'm obsessed with skincare. I get sent a lot of things. I'm obsessed with buying new things and just trying this and that. And I have such a struggle with finding things that work for me. Things always break me out or they don't work for me or they're not hydrating enough or they're too hydrating and I just felt like I was like what I felt like was this really weird and specific skincare type and it turns out it's not. There's just more nuance to that like three categories that we're used to seeing. You know I was chatting with her a little bit after and you know what she said made so much sense that you know I told her that what I really liked about her line is that it's all about like tried and true things that work and it's not about like the hot new ingredient that that that's going around and it's not about being trendy and it's not about smelling good and look you know what i mean it's not like gimmicky and so that's what i really love about her about her products and what she said that made so much sense is that because she's had a spa for so long she and her estheticians were using these products on clients and she was able to see like firsthand the results so instead of like you know a company launching a product and getting like reviews or people you know repurchasing it's like you're not really seeing with your own eyes how these products are changing people's skin and so that made so much sense that i'm like no wonder these products work so well is because she's been able to see the results firsthand through her clients i feel so honored that she gave me a facial today and was able to kind of get um a look at my skin and recommend things and I love that you guys were able to get some tips and tricks too. So yeah, I hope this video was informative and fun to watch and educational for you guys. Um, I'm gonna leave all the links below of like her blog and the skincare quiz. You know, whether you're like skincare obsessed like me or you're just starting out, um, you know, there's something for everyone. I feel even better supporting um, her line now after meeting her and like hearing about like her philosophy and her history. Um, she's just such a nice person. She really cares about people and about skin. And I just feel like I'm in a dream right now. Like that was just so fun. And I'm really glad I got to share it with you guys. So let me know in the comments down below if you like this video. Make sure you follow Renee, follow her blog, take her skincare quiz, you know, schedule a consultation if you'd like, and um, you won't regret it at all. And I'll see you in my next video.